Happy Friday, everybody. My name's Jamin Gerker. I'm a local realtor in South Central Alaska. And today, I'm gonna to be giving you a market update for what is going on in the entire state. And then I'm gonna dig a little bit deeper and look into what has been going on in the biggest market, real estate markets, and the state as well, just so we kind of get a temperature on how we're doing. And this is gonna be from about mid-July up to the current time where it's about mid-August 2020. We're gonna dive into all of that in just a couple minutes, but before we get started, do make sure you give this video a like, make sure that you subscribe, and make sure that you ask any questions that you have, that way you can be one of the most informed people about what is going on in the shifting market as we continue to move forward. So without further ado, let's go and jump into it. Looking overall for the state in inventory, the big thing I saw is we are seeing a 24% drop in the amount of inventory and the number of houses that are available for people to purchase right now. Now, it went down from just over 3,800 to just over 2,900 homes that are on the market. And that's, that's obviously pretty significant because the amount of inventory we have is going to directly um, interact with the demand that we have. And with the low interest rates right at the moment, we do actually have a pretty high demand. The other thing I really like to look at when we're trying to decipher how the market is doing is looking at the number of new listings that are on the market. We know the past couple of months, inventory has been pretty low just because a lot of people haven't wanted to get their house on the market during a pandemic, which at some level makes sense. Now, we would expect to see some kind of a rebound and in seeing more inventory than usual coming onto the market. We do see a little bit of that as far as the entire state goes, looking specifically at the overall aggregate amount we're seeing. There was 948 homes that were on the market, new homes that came on the market, and now we're seeing about 970 odd homes that, that came on the market. So there's a 3% increase there. So that's, it is an increase, but it's also not making up for 24% less homes overall we have for inventory. So inventory is low and we don't really see the new homes coming on the market as being something that's gonna make up the difference anytime soon. How about the number of properties that are under contract right now? This has actually gone up quite a bit, as a matter of fact, by 36% overall for the entire state. That's, that's pretty significant. So even though inventory is low, we still have a lot of buyers out there <clears throat> that want to find something because the interest rates are so low. So this just is kind of the, the extra proof we, we have that there's still really high demand even though the inventory is low. Now, another thing I really like to look at is just the overall number of properties that have actually closed during this time. Because we know that the summer months, you know, especially July, August, that's gonna be kind of a, a critical, pivotal time for the local real estate markets. Now, looking at that, <clears throat> what we're actually seeing is there is a 18% increase and the number of properties that have actually closed during that time compared to the same time period last year. So that just means we're having a lot of compression put into a couple of months here, because keep in mind, all the, the lenders and title companies, they not necessarily had an increase in capacity. So they're having to just try to cram in an entire summer's worth of, of real estate, which are the really busy months, into a couple, couple months at this point so it's it's um, we're seeing a lot of properties close a lot quicker but it's it's also it's um, also a lot more compressed so be patient if you're looking at buying something right now there's there's kind of a bit of a log jam right now with with underwriters and with title just because so many people are trying to <clears throat> refinance their properties and close on properties so just something to be aware of has this been useful for you so far if it has, you know what to do. Make sure you give this video a like and also make sure that you comment down below what additional questions you might have. Is there a specific area that you'd like to know more information about? By all means, post those down below and I'll make sure to do some research for you. Now without further ado, let's jump back into it. Now how much sold volume 
have we increased since, you know, during this time period last year, mid-July to mid-August? What we're seeing is there's a 29% increase in the overall amount of real estate that we've sold during that time. That's, that's pretty significant. So what it does mean is that, you know, the, the properties that we are selling are, they're either gonna be more expensive and there's just the price on average is gonna go up a little bit, which we'll get to that in just a second here. But that's a pretty significant because that just means that we are seeing, again, continuous movement there. So that's going to be the numbers that we're seeing just for the overall state. Now let's break it down a little bit more and look into some of the larger markets in the area. Now that we kind of know what the, what the bar is right now overall for the average of the state. Now keep in mind the decrease in inventory overall for the state is about 24%. In Anchorage, it is 16%. Overall for the state, the number of new listings coming on is increased by 3%. For Anchorage, it is increased by 13%. For the number of properties under contract, for those that have gone pending, where people have put in an offer for it, it's up by 36% overall for the state. For Anchorage specifically, it's 43%. For the number of sold properties, overall for the state, it increased by 18%. For the number of Anchorage, it's increased by 30. For the number of, let's go, let's go ahead and go to sale price here. For the number of properties, um, average sale price increased by nine overall. For Anchorage, it increased by five. For the Kenai Peninsula, the overall for the state it, for inventory was down 24%. For the Kenai Peninsula is down by 27 for the number of new listings coming on the market during that time. Overall for the state, it increased 3% for the Kenai Peninsula. It actually decreased by 5%. Looking at the number of properties under contract overall, the number of, um, the percent of properties that went under the market overall was 36% for the Kenai Peninsula. The number actually increased by 38%, so slightly above. <clears throat> the number of properties sold during that time, whereas overall we increased by 18%. The number of properties sold during that time period from mid-July, mid-August for the Kenai Peninsula actually decreased by 10%. And the number of sold volume actually went, you know, actually increased by 6% overall and increased by 29. And the average sold price you know, the overall in Alaska went up by 9%. For the Kenai Peninsula, it went up by 19%. <clears throat> Let's look at the Matanuska Valley. Looking at inventory first, again, overall inventory is 24% down, 24%. And the number of, <clears throat> and the number of inventory in the Matsu Valley is gonna be 28. Looking at the number of new listings, Overall, it's up 3%. In the Matsu Valley, it's up 6%. Looking at the number under contract, in the overall, it's 36%. Looking at the number in the Matsu Valley, it's up 34%. So, pretty reflective of the average. Looking at the number sold, overall, it's up 18. And looking at the overall in the Matsu Valley, it's up 32%. Pretty significant. And looking at the average sold price, overall it's up 9%. Looking at the overall uh, average sold price for the Matsu Valley, it is up 15%. Now looking at Fairbanks, let's look at the inventory first. Again, overall average for the state is down by 24%. Looking at Fairbanks, it's down by 37%. So there's actually less inventory than there typically is even for the average there right now. So uh, the number of new listings, the overall for the state is it increased by 3%. The number of overall new listings in Fairbanks dropped by 54%. That's, that's pretty significant. That means there's not gonna be a whole lot of inventory there. Looking at the number of properties that are under contract, 
overall, the state has increased by 36%. In Fairbanks, it decreased by 16%. Looking at the number of properties sold during that time frame, overall for the state increased by 18%. And for Fairbanks, though, it decreased by 47%. That's, that's something to be expected, though, just because there's not a lot of inventory and not a whole lot of um, not a whole lot of ground being made up with, with replenishing it. And looking at the average sold price, again, it was overall in the state up by 9%. And looking at Fairbanks, it's down by 18%. So what does all this mean? Well, really what it means is it means just across the entire state, there's not a whole lot of inventory right at the moment. And that's great if you're a seller, because that means if you have property and you've been thinking about selling, you're probably never gonna find a much better opportunity in, in the near future than right at this moment to try to get something sold before we start going into, going into the winter months. At the end of the world, if you have to sell during the winter months, but most people would prefer, would prefer not to, okay? So that's, that's really the first big takeaway. Secondly, we're seeing that on average, the price is going up slightly for properties. It's gonna depend on the specific area that you're in, but in most marketplaces, we're seeing an increase in the average sold price. Now, not necessarily does that mean you're gonna see a 9% you know, increase, but it is something where you might not have been able to get your price before, but now the data is showing it's, it's not unrealistic to think you can get a little bit more for your property than you might have been able to get before. So those are all the things that we're seeing. Um, if you have any questions or any additional concerns you would like to have answered, by all means, post those down below. I'd be happy to answer them as best I can. Um, I do my best to keep up with all the comments on on this channel and I, I love all the comments and questions you guys have keep them coming um, if you have something where you just for sure want to have or need to have a response back please message me through directly through the um, through my Facebook page the link for that is going to be in the description down below that's that's the best way to, to make sure that I'm going to respond to you okay um, I'm trying to keep up with everybody here but things kind of get lost and confused after a while so message me directly through the Facebook page and be happy to get right back to you and thanks for watching you guys have a good weekend